this time we had another garden tour. So come with me and uh, yeah, it's, it looks like it might rain a bit, but uh, let's see if we can squeeze it in because I think it would be really good just to show you where we're at. Okay, so we're up at the gate, uh, looking at my woodland border. Uh, the calla lilies have died back now, pretty much, and the uh, hellebores. Oh, this is where I try to remember all the names. And these hellebores are coming, um, coming out, and it looks like they're starting to bud up. The foxgloves that I put in are growing quite nicely, um, and that little rose that I put in is doing okay. I'm actually going to move this um, aquilegia. So this little aquilegia here, I'm actually going to move that and put it over there next to the other aquilegia. I think it's a new one. I threw some seeds in, some different seeds, so it could be a new type, or it could indeed just be sort of self-seeded from that, the older plant there, in which case the flowers uh, may be yellow like the original plant, or, or I understand they may actually revert to being pink. I mean, if that's the case, it'll have to come out because I don't like pink particularly, and particularly not in this border, which, because it's sort of slightly darker here, I like things here to be sort of white and sort of brighter, if you like. Yeah, that doesn't make sense, but... <laughs> Anyway, the, um, the garden is looking so soggy. Oh, I don't know if you can see that sky over there. It's looking very grey, so we'll try and get this done before it rains again. So the espaliers haven't actually grown much this summer. We didn't have enough sun, I don't think. So they are basically sitting there waiting to lose their leaves, and then I'll give them a prune. The uh, Daphne has now got little buds and things on it, so high hopes that, that will flower. And that smell is delightful right near the gate. Um, I have lots of rose hips. I don't know if you can see them up there on the rose. So probably time to sort of harvest those now and uh, process them. Last year I made some really nice rose hip syrups, so planning to do that again. Um, what have we got down here? Now I have to announce some very sad news. Last weekend, one of our chickens died, so we only have three now, which is such a shame. Um, I don't know what was really wrong. Um, she just wasn't well one day, and, um, and that was it. So anyway, yeah, there we go. We've just got three chickens now, so they're hard at work. Unfortunately, it was one of the Australorps, which I really like. But there's the last remaining Australorp. She's looking very very scrappy at the moment because they are molting so as you can see she looks total mess but anyway yeah maybe we'll get some new little chicks next summer i've got one remaining apple there on that uh, monty surprise it could be monty surprise or it could be peas good non such i've actually not figured out which graft is which on that tree uh so there we go one remaining apple on that and you can probably spy the exciting new Kumara planter stroke garlic bread. We've pretty much finished it. I just need to add the lining. So let's go over and have a look. I'll show you a close up. And you can see the blueberries here now are starting to change color, which is quite nice. But this is the bin hide. The whole idea is that we have the hose pipe in there and um, the watering can see if I can get a little closer and I'm also storing my, my pots in there because obviously it doesn't matter if they get wet so that's really uh, good and then you can see behind there that's where I have my bins hidden now and you can't see them from the conservatory so it works really well and I can just open the lids through this gap here you can see I can just I can just open the lids through here and put the rubbish in when we want to put the bins out we just wheel it out of here and wheel it along the pathway and up to the street. So that works really well. There's nothing in the top at the moment. Um, I'm gonna just put it over the top so you can see what's inside. It's got a slatted base. So what I'm planning to do is line it with some weed matting and maybe some old compost bags with hole, you know, push some holes in it. And then it'll be a relatively shallow planter but the idea is that then the kumara will be able to grow up that trellis and maybe I'll put some nasturtiums in and make it look really pretty and it can tumble over the edge. So yes, that's the exciting news. That is pretty much finished. Okay, so what's happening in the rest of the garden? Well, 
You can see we've got lemons. We've got lots of lemons uh, which we're starting to harvest now. So they're doing really well. Not quite as many as last year. Oh, the rain is coming down. <laughs> Lovely. It's raining. I'm actually going to pause here and go inside and come back <laughs> and continue when it stopped raining. Okay, the rain is over and the sun's come out. Look, we had the bizarrest weather. Beautiful, beautiful blue sky up there. Look at that. And yet, over there, big grey cloud. <laughs> anyway, so we have beautiful sunshine now. So let's have a little look. We've got lemons coming and we're harvesting those, which are gorgeous. Let's go and have a look at the beds. My uh, lavender, <laughs> it's holding its own and it's still alive. I have given it a bit of a trim, but it is finding it very wet, even in this really dry bed. The lavender that goes along the back of that bed, I don't know if you can see it along there, that has all died, way too wet this year. But this is a particularly dry bed, and yeah, it's still alive. So <laughs> hopefully it can hold its own and we'll get some sun maybe next year. Anyway, let's have a little look at the very drippy beds. Now you'll see, I still have courgette trees going. I don't think they're going to produce any more courgettes, um, but it wasn't that long ago we had a courgette off them and there is still the odd flower. So, but I think I'll take them out now. I have lots of new plantings in, so they're all pretty small. So you can see broccoli and spinach and beetroot and onions, I think, and leeks there. Through the middle, more broccoli, but I leave all the flowers and the older plants still in the beds just to cover it. And you can see I've got the neighbor's grass clippings down as well. Um, that just really helps with the the rain can sometimes sort of compact soil so it really adds by organic adding organic matter and also it just covers that soil you can see now that the asparagus is over but it's just been so beautiful i mean look at the sun glinting off off those raindrops there i don't know if you can see that but it's so pretty and i have the most gorgeous berries over here that are just covered in little drops of water. It is so, so pretty. And I've got my, my um, monge too going. I really cannot grow peas in the ground. I have tried and tried and tried and the slugs and snails just take them off. So I found the best success is to put them in a hanging basket in the winter uh, at this time of year, certainly, we usually get enough rain to make hanging baskets work in Auckland. And I've got a little frost cloth over it because when they're new, the birds do love to nibble. So, yeah, you can see I've got all sorts of bits and pieces in there. My parsley is sort of hanging on, but it does seem to be, I don't know, it looks a little bit sad. But anyway, it is hanging on. We're still having the parsley, which is great. This bed, these beds are very slow because as you can see, they are fully shaded. This is the UK and that's Germany over there. And they are fully shaded. You can see quite clearly where the sun comes in. The fence knocks the sun out. So you can see the angle that comes in and these two beds are completely shaded. But I still plant brassicas and they do still grow and I do still get crops off them. So they're slow, but they keep chogging on. And you can also see that I've got old cosmos in there, which I just leave for the wildlife. I'm not using that space and the seeds will drop and self seed. And it's really important during the, the winter, autumn and winter months to have sort of those old plants and creating habitat and everything. So that'll stay there. I'm not bothered and it'll just disintegrate into the soil itself. Because as I say, these beds really don't do that much in the winter. They're very slow beds. And as you can see over there, oh, you can see it, we still have our Cyclone Gabrielle Cavallo Nero, which is still chucking out food, but it's very wonky. I'll show you a closer up in a minute. Okay, so excuse my shadow. I don't do much about that. Maybe I'll try from the other side. Okay, so this now, this is one of my sunny winter beds. So these do the two beds at the front. This is France, and this one over here is Italy. And these two do stay in sun all winter long. 
So they're my best growing beds in the winter. And as you can see, I've got some Cavallo Nero, I've got some chard, I've still got carrots in there, I've got leeks. I've sown some more carrots underneath that uh, frost cloth there. And the reason it's in there, we don't have frost in Auckland, but the reason it's there is to dissuade the birds from picking through it while they're still very small. But I did have a peak the other day and I don't think I've got many growing, so I might have to re-sow. I think the slugs and snails with all this wet weather have really laid in. In Crystal Palace here, I have a couple of small beds which I made last year in Crystal Palace. Um, those were lettuces, they're pretty much bolting and over, but again, I leave those, they will, they will self-seed quite happily. As you can see, I've got a little flower over there, I don't know what that is. <laughs> there's a spinach there, but there's something that's decided to self-seed itself there. I don't know what it is, but we will see. Okay, and on the other side of Crystal Palace, just spinning you around, I've got some rocket coming through. And over there, there is some um, bit of mache and a bit of lettuce. The birds have been chewing my lettuce yet again. It's an ongoing battle with lettuce. I still haven't come up with a very good solution, but lettuce and my garden and the birds is such a job. Anyway, here is my wonky Cavallo Nero. So this is Germany, doesn't get any sun at all during the winter. But as you can see, look at those brassicas there. They are, they're romping away. They're doing really well. I did try sowing a bunch of peas along the back edge there, all eaten by the slugs and snails, so they didn't work. The, um, the quince is trained and all the leaves have pretty much fallen off the quince now. That'll be, stay dormant now until next spring when the flowers and uh, the leaves will come out, which would be lovely. The rhubarb is romping away in that corner, not so much in that corner. I think it's a bit wetter over there and maybe a bit darker. I've got some new leeks in here, all sorts of bits and pieces and some um, brassicas as well. And these will all um, stagger. So these ones over here will produce earlier and then these will carry on. The smaller ones will carry on and they'll be much later in the season. And if you look around in Italy, <laughs> you can see my wonky beans. I think I will take these out, but they all died when we had the cyclone and all the salt laden winds. And then they came back and they're growing away happy as anything. Look at that growth down there and up at the top of that one there. The cane supports really are hanging on by a thread, but uh, yeah, I don't know if they're going to flower. They may flower, they may have beans, I'm not sure. Still in two minds whether to take those out or leave them be, but at the moment they're plants in the soil, so I'm leaving them in. Over here we've got uh, the, what is that, amaranth. We had some amaranth. Do you remember I put the amaranth in, um, it was in with the pumpkins. And then the pumpkins grew and the amaranth didn't do so well. And the pumpkins totally overtook the amaranth. Well, of course, when the pumpkins all died back, the amaranth decided to give it a go. So <laughs> they're still in there doing their thing. Excuse my shadow, I can't really do much about that. And then, of course, we've got perpetual spinach down there. And this, this here is... A honeysuckle which was romping away doing really really well and then last year I think it died but then I came to snip it and take it out and it's still green in the center so I don't know if it's actually dead or not I've got another one over there which still has its leaves on and is much younger in the ground so I'm leaving that to see if in spring it has new growth or whether it really is dead we will see and of course I've got brassicas and things um, in amongst all of this. Some more brassicas, some chard, some more leeks, all sorts of bits and pieces in here. Okay, so let's have a little look on Park Square. The constant puddle in the middle of Park Square. We need to figure out how to sort that. Um, I'm not quite sure. I have been told that maybe I need to put some leveling compound on here, but then that means that we'd have to put um, put a new surface on maybe tiles or something like that which may be further down in the future but at the moment we just have our puddle <laughs> anyway I have um, oh excuse my shadow again I have some pots here which have got some lettuce the darker colored lettuce the birds don't seem to attack as much so that's why I'm doing some dark some red lettuce and that in the pot there is, um, it's for the chickens. When I have old seeds, seeds from things I don't want anymore, I basically sprinkle them about, uh, make a pot for the girls. You can see there's a little bit of 
netting on there. Um, and then I put it in their run and then they can just eat the tops off and then it sort of regrows. I bring it back out, it regrows and I put it back in again. So they have fresh greens. So I have two pots that interchange, which is quite nice. I did actually also buy some, some chicken seed um, growing mix the other day so that apparently that's full of beneficial plants, things that give, it, give them the nutrients they want. So I'm trying that out as well. In my pots, I'll just walk through the puddle <laughs> and get out of the shot. So in my pots now, my potatoes are coming up. In the uh, video I did, the last video maybe, I, um, I sowed these potatoes. And you can see that they're now coming through. So I will need to um, heap those up, basically. I will fill the pot up maybe another few inches with compost and then leave them to come through again. So this pot, again, is coming through. Then what I'll do is I'll kick off another couple of pots um, so that I've got them staggered. My yams now uh, are pretty much died off, so I'm going to be harvesting those and seeing what I get inside. The kumara is still going uh, strong in my bucket, so I'll leave those until it does properly die off, um, and then we can see what we've got in those pots. Of course, that was its temporary home because we were going to finish the kumara planter much sooner than we actually have. So that was only be, supposed to be a temporary home, but they've been in there all summer. And with it being so wet, they've been okay in there. So um, we'll see how it goes. Now, let's walk through my puddle. You can see, excuse my shadow, my next bunch of bananas are starting to get a little bit bigger. The ones in the conservatory are all going yellow and we've been eating them and they've been absolutely delicious. And of course, that stalk that I've left at the back now, that also has another bunch of bananas, which is a little bit behind the other one. So um, we've got sort of staggered bananas and I'm trying, I don't know if you can see, there's my shadow again. I'm trying to thin out my banana patch, but as you can see, I've probably still got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in there, and I'm supposed to have three. So I'll just need to keep working on that. The elderberry has pretty much dropped all its leaves now, so I will prune that right back to the fence over the winter while it's dormant and allow the passion fruit a little bit more room, and then it will romp away again in the spring and go poof like it has this year and take up that entire space. So usually I have some down there, I have some New Zealand spinach that comes back every year, but I can't see it this year, so maybe the wet weather has um, been too much for it, so I might need to see if I can get some more New Zealand spinach. So the passion fruit, I was looking the other day and it's put out a late fruit. I don't know if you can see that, but we've got a fruit there. So that's exciting. I don't know if it's gonna ripen, but uh, we will see. There's a little bit of growth still on the plum, but it's pretty much uh, died off now. The rhubarb in the base is going really quite well. My comfort is doing nicely. And of course the wild strawberries, all the wild strawberries are uh, romping away. No fruit or flowers yet, but they are really taking that space, which is lovely. In fact, they've even covered over the uh, dry riverbed down there because the dry riverbed comes from that, the, um, the corner there, comes all the way down here. And then as you can see, it, it comes out and over to there. So I might have to do a little bit of clearing. This is the time of year when it's extremely difficult to grow anything because we're right near the shortest day. So obviously the shortest day of the year is in June. And then after that, it starts to um, pick up a bit. But this time of year, it's the darkest in the garden and things are the slowest. The rose I got from my friend is, uh, seems really happy in that pot. It's been flowering and it's been really pretty. The strawberries really need sorting out. They are, oh look, I've even got a flower. Look, I've got a strawberry flower. You're a bit late, but you can see they've all pretty much died off now. The runners um, need potting up. You can see I've got runners coming out here. They need potting up and sorting through. All the dead leaves need clearing out. And obviously I've got this kumara in here as well, which was from the year before. So I'll need to dig it all out and find that kumara anyway. So they need some work. I tried popping this railing here, thinking that maybe um, I could uh, level it up and it would sort of create a bit of a sort of courtyardy feel. 
I'm not sure about it. It may go around to the corner into a west into the west gardens and create more of a structure for a climbing plant. But I've got the other piece of it round the corner. And I think it looks quite nice there. And I'm thinking that maybe I can pop the two on top of each other and climb something up it or turn it round. I'm not sure. Still to be decided, but it's so much easier to sort these things out when all the plants have sort of died back a bit and you've got a bit more room. But the citrus are doing really nicely, so we've got lots of tangerines that are going into the kitchen now. An amazing amount of tangerines for such a tiny tree. You can't really see it amongst all the others, but the, the tree, the tangerine is quite small. That tree there is the lime tree, which probably needs a bit of a trim back. Um, yeah, everything here probably needs a bit of a trim back. That's an orange tree. We only had a couple of oranges on that this year. And then just looking down the West Gardens down here, it's all very drippy. Um, that, my Chilean guava, is doing really nicely. Even though it has so much shade, it is doing really nicely and growing quite well. I'll come through and do a bit of a quick weed now and again, but I just leave it. It's, it's for the wildlife. It's the wild area of my garden. So I just leave it to romp away, get scruffy. I do take out weeds that could be a problem and I can just see one in the far corner. The neighbours have wandering dew. I try to block it out with that plastic edging but look it's still coming through so I have to basically just pull it out and try to stop it doing that. Anyway so this is all yeah all very messy but I don't mind that's what it's here for. It's here for the wildlife. My succulent garden is absolutely romping away. I mean look at these I love the way they're spilling over they're just gorgeous. I've actually taken a little bit of that one and put that here just to see if I can get that to romp further down as well. But I've got a variety of different succulents. Whenever I see a bit of succulent somewhere, I take, take a little tiny piece of it, pop it in, and it does well. The other thing it's taking off here is moss. I would have thought it was too dry for moss, but not with the year we've had, actually. It's been very wet. So we've got moss there, which is really lovely. So I'm encouraging that too. Um, I know people, when I see on videos overseas, they have strawberries and all sorts of things in gutter plantings, but it's just too dry. We can't do that in the middle of summer. Well, I should say this. Caveat, usually. Not this year, but usually. The pond, looking really pretty. It's got lots going on. The plants are romping away. Look at that. I don't know if we can see anything in there. There's lots of life. You probably can't see anything. There's leaves and all sorts. And again, I just leave this alone. There's some algae and bits and pieces and things drop in and it just gets on with life. It's basically just a water source for wildlife. And you can see that I've put these little rocks down into the water so that things can actually reach the water and get out again. So that's my garden for, what is it? The 1st of June. So the very beginning of winter. It's all quite slow and very drippy, but still producing food. I now need to start thinking about planning for my spring garden, which is always very exciting. Um, and I'm using my new system that I developed that worked really well last year. And I'm actually running a workshop on that. So if keep an eye on the Secret Gardens website, because I'm going to be running an online workshop. So the workshop's going to be online you through Zoom. And so anybody really around New Zealand or further afield will be able to join in. And I'm going to just go through how I've set up the garden um, and how I plan to grow food all year round for a continuous harvest. So not having too much and not having gaps and not enough to eat. Anyway, I hope you join me for that. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye.